We've learned that AI imports process definitions and operational data from the scheduler and converts them into job streams and job stream runs respectively. AI is enabled to support IT operations commitment to the business via service level agreement management. It also analyzes job stream runs to reveal potential improvements in the design of the processes themselves. AI analytics provide extremely useful insights, metrics, and performance indicators to open up several avenues for batch optimization. One of the most important feature sets in AI is the critical path, and students should understand exactly what this is. The job stream's critical path is calculated automatically for each job stream run, and every run has one. The critical path singles out every job in the job stream that comprises the longest path to the target job on that particular run. Critical path run times are used to generate automated calculations of SLAs and determine compliance or failure. In this video, we explain how AI determines the critical path of a job stream run. For a given job stream, the critical path will usually change from run to run. This may seem counterintuitive. The critical path should be a constant. A process is made up of a string of business critical jobs executing in a specific sequence, and so it's easy to assume that this is the critical path. In AI, it's not the case. Here's why. AI's core mission is SLA compliance, but also contraction. In other words, the solution uses time as an organizing principle, not criticality. We deploy AI because we want to run our batch windows as fast as possible, and we're less concerned with the relative importance of one job in the process container versus another. And so the critical path will be set by relative runtime, not the underlying impact of the batch process itself. Finally, we'll show how to use the Analysis tab and the critical path to optimize our jobs, tighten batch windows, and ultimately deliver an improved service to the business. The focus of the video is the job stream runs critical path. Let's go through some important notions. The critical path is a sequence of jobs within a job stream run that comprise the longest path to the successful completion of the target job. Using several factors, namely the target job and runtime of its predecessors, AI defines a critical path for the run to reveal potential avenues for improvements in process definition that could lead to shorter batch windows. Over time, these runs and their respective critical paths are collated into aggregated data pools to determine the job stream's SLA when they are not set manually. This is significant. It means that if you want to improve a batch window, you have to find ways to contract the job stream's critical path. This leads to a new set of opportunities around the reduction of failures, latency, code efficiency, and more. All of these things can contribute to shorter critical paths. AI uses a very specific method to generate a run's critical path, and we're going to cover this next. Finally, understand that the critical path is specific to a job stream run, not the scheduler definition or AI job stream. For each run, AI calculates a critical path. If a job stream runs a thousand times a year, you potentially have a thousand different critical paths. This is important because it means a job could be included in the critical path of one run, but not the next. Some jobs are constant. In other words, they're consistently included in the critical path. Others may or may not make it. Finally, others are never included. We're going to explain why next. Let's go over some important aspects of AI job streams versus scheduler definitions. We'll use atomic automation as an example. One of the most significant and immediate benefits of AI is its capacity to take cryptic and arcane job definitions in the scheduler and turn them into easily readable sequential job streams. In the scheduler, a job definition can be difficult to decipher if you didn't write it. Developers aim for efficiency, often at the cost of clarity. Readability will almost always be an afterthought. If you look at the atomic workflow, it's hard to identify a sequence and you have absolutely no way of anticipating each job's potential run times. This workflow has about 17 individual jobs. When the job count is in the hundreds, the workflow turns into a black box. When the process runs, you can access the monitoring tools, but again, this is just going to be a reflection of the definition, which is of no help at all. Obviously, you can always use the list-based monitoring tool, but that's not really an improvement either. By contrast, the AI job stream counterpart produces a clear and eminently readable picture of the situation. Individual executions are shown in sequence, run times are conveyed with simple bars and dependencies with arrows. Nested containers like boxes and workflows are represented with bars of various colors, and so it becomes very easy to work through the process. AI goes a step further. Every time the process runs, a matching run is generated in AI. 
For each of these runs, AI points out the jobs that are central to the success of the job stream based on the target job and its predecessors. The message is clear. If you want to improve the process operationally, you have to make some of these red bars shorter. Because it uses runtime as the driving element of the calculation, the rate of inclusion of some of these jobs in the critical path varies with each execution, depending on how the process is structured. Some jobs will always be included in the critical path, others will only appear sporadically. We explain why next. Let's explain how the critical path is constructed in each run. The critical path always stems from the target job and then works backwards from there. For the job stream to be successful, the target job has to complete. So AI builds the critical path by asking one simple question. What is preventing the target job from executing? So it works backwards. In our example, there's the target job and it's in the critical path. It has a single predecessor. Irrespective of its runtime, that job must also be in the critical path. AI continues to work backwards from there. This job has four predecessors. AI will select the predecessor with the longest runtime and include it in the critical path. It moves backwards and finds only one predecessor, so that job is included. Upstream, we find four jobs with the same start time. One ran the longest. However, there is no dependency condition between the job and the current critical path job, so it's simply not a predecessor. And so it's not included in the critical path. On a different run, any predecessor in the path generated from the target job that runs longer is included in the critical path. Note that AI accounts for resources when building the critical path. It's also true for job streams with embedded containers, for example, nested workflows. The process is the same. AI will assess the job stream based on the target job and the runtimes of the predecessors and evaluate the nested workflow the same way. If the nested workflow is in the critical path, then AI figures out the items inside the workflow that are blocking its execution. Those upstream jobs will then be included in the critical path as well. So why is this important? Well, we know that one of the most central roles and value propositions of AI is SLA management. This means monitoring process runtimes, making sure they execute under certain deadlines, and alerting operations teams. But AI goes further. It also uncovers opportunities for batch window improvements by singling out offending jobs that contribute to slowing things down. Monitoring or even analytics tools native to the schedulers generally don't do a good job with this because the scheduler's mission statement is to run batches, not help developers make them faster. Let's use an example of a job stream run in which we've shown the upstream dependencies of all the critical path jobs. We know that the overall SLA of a job stream is calculated using the average of the values of critical path job runtimes in the entire history of the job stream. A fundamental priority in our work with AI is the tightening of SLAs. We want shorter red bars. Looking at the successive runs of a job stream, we can quickly detect the opportunities with the highest promise without wasting any time on the rest. Using critical paths, AI evidences the low-hanging fruits. First, we're not going to worry about the very short run times because the upside is limited. Even if we manage to shave a few seconds off of each of these, it's not going to fundamentally change things. We're also going to ignore this job because it has a tendency to move in and out of the critical path from one run to the next. Why is this? It's because it shares a downstream critical path successor with three other predecessors with comparable run times. If we tighten its runtime through operational design improvements, one of its siblings simply takes its place, leading to limited overall improvements. It's also true for this job. It's one of two predecessors to the target job which have comparable runtimes. It leaves this job, which is a critical path constant. Contracting it leads to an immediate improvement of the overall runtime, since the only other predecessor is this one, whose runtime is very short. Thanks to AI, we've managed to find a candidate in seconds, something that might have taken us hours using the scheduler's design tools. Note that AI has a pre-configured report that will produce a list of jobs with a high degree of critical path inclusion. By combining this data with very long average runtimes, we're able to produce a solid list of candidates for improvements.